If you're listening to this recording, it means I'm dead already. Oh, wait a second. Oh, that's a different recording. Here's what's coming up on the Nice Guys today. That's how I ended up in accounting. Uh, it was also because that kind of prolonged my grow up decision uh, because, uh, well, what, what job can I get with the lowest GPA and still get a good job? So that'll be important. And then also, uh, if I could do accounting, I can still do finance. I can still do management. I can still do IT. I can still do marketing. So, okay, I don't have to actually grow up. Excuse me, can I borrow your towel? My car just hit a water buffalo. Need an education on how to grow your business? The nice guys are here to help. Learn about great customer service, networking, and how just being nice can help you prosper. Now, here are your hosts, Doug Sandler and Strickland Bonner. Hey, Funkin' fans, welcome back. Welcome back. It's Monday, Monday, Monday. My name is Strickland Bonner. On the other side of the microphone, Mr. Doug Sandler. We're talking today to John Garrett. If this guy doesn't wake you up for a Monday, <laughs> nobody can. You must be dead. John is a recovering a recovering CPA. He's a funny guy. I would not think that an accountant, a recovering accountant, would be actually funny, but he's, he's built this into his entire act, a professional speaker. I met him at, uh, I, I think I met him at the NSA conference, if, if memory serves me correctly. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, good I don't guy. Remember. Funny guy. Uh, he has this whole program about um, what's his podcast called? The Green Apple Podcast. The Green Apple Podcast. Yeah, just about like what makes you stand out. You know, in a whole sea of red apples, what makes you the green apple? So, mm-hmm. uh, really, really interesting perspective on life. Good podcast. Uh, good guy. And um, again, I think you'll, I think you'll enjoy him. What's his, uh, what's his website? Strict. Do you have his that? website is johngcomedy.com. I mean, you can go to the recoveringcpa.com and it, it, it sends you to John G comedy.com he's done over 1800 presentations and he can do emceeing and corporate speaking and the thing is he, he just knows stuff i mean he was a cpa like he went to school for that like and he was working for one of the big firms and then he just said i hate this i need to do something else and that and he did and he's really interesting he's got a lot of great insights into a lot of things and just a couple of things before we get to the interview with uh with john if you are a listener on overcast please take a moment just to recommend the episodes please 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 that would really help us go back as many episodes as you have go back just hit the little star button that would be great also we would love to have your support using patreon on patreon.com forward slash nice guys uh, we have reward levels from fifteen hundred dollars all the way down to a buck so somewhere in there is a support level and a reward level that would be uh, that would be cool for you but remember uh, that fifteen hundred dollar level only one person can do that you know, what ha- at, at a time. Wait, so, you know, you, you gonna- better get it now before somebody else does. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> oh, so that's right. Because don't they give you on pa- on Patreon, don't they tell you, ha- ask you how many, like, that you're allowed to have at a certain level? Yeah, exactly. Did we well, check off Well, you can that- limit it. You're allowed to limit it. I figured, you know, limiting our $1,500 level to one, I thought was actually a pretty that good That was idea, probably good. We'll fly anywhere in the United States where you are, and we will have lunch with you, me and Strick. Yeah. And we'll maybe even drop some business advice on your lap as well. And if you are outside of the continental U.S., there may be a, a slight upcharge, like for us to go to Dubai, you know, the UAE or something like that. But we're still go. Absolutely. Or, or you could just pick. You want me or Strick to come. I wouldn't be right. offended if you just want Strick. Yeah, there you go. Or you I'd could come okay. to us. Either way, it's all good. Either way. If that's true. Well, wait a minute. If they pay the $1,500, do they then have to pay their way to get here? Nah, I get to think about that one. Let's cross that bridge when we come to it. Let's get that. Let's get that donation first, and then we'll figure out how to actually give them what we've told them we're going to give them. That is a very good point. Uh, today's episode sponsored by Dallin Miller PR, uh, the podcast team dot com. If you've ever thought about going on podcasts as a guest in order to promote your message and your brand, uh, just connect with uh, with Dallin, Jason, and the podcast team gang over at Dallin Miller PR. That is the podcast team. Uh, dot com. Dallin, he's a he's a good guy. He ha- he's actually turned a whole bunch of great guests like Mo Galdat onto us, and uh, he's got a couple of clients. He's he's been promising some clients our way. I'm I'm hoping that it I'm hoping it pays off. Strick, you know, Turnkey is uh, we're waiting for him. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Looking forward to it. All right. So uh, one final mention, just socialquant.net. If you have not had a moment to head over to socialquant.net, if you're really trying to boost your social following, socialquant.net is the way to do that. Target, specify, and fine tune in on your social following on Twitter. Socialquant.net is the team to uh, to check out. 14-day free trial just by uh, just by signing up today. You don't even have to tell me you're come to them from the nice guys. You can just do it just because you are a nice guy. Socialquant.net. All right, let's get to the interview. John Garrett, he uh, he is here, and I am interviewing him today. We are the Nice Guys on Business podcast, and let's do it. John Garrett. 
If funny is as funny does, our guest today, John Garrett, is the, uh, I would consider him the poster child. So funny. I met up with uh, with this recovering CPA at the National Speakers Association down in Orlando, Florida, just a short time ago, talking literally about the business of funny. And here to share a bit of his journey and the banana peels stepped on along the way. See how I did that, John? That was good. Very well, good. Very good. <laughs> welcome, John, to the Nice Guys on Business podcast. Thank you so much, man. I'm, I'm really, really excited to be here. I am. Uh, I'm happy that you're here. Also, I, I sat in on a on a funny session, and, and and you probably were familiar with the session. Also, there was five guys that came up. I I think you might have even been one of them, right? Was that right? Actually, I, I wasn't, but uh, I don't want to ruin the interview. No, so yes, no, it was the main one. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, do you remember the, the the lady that went last? What was her name? Je- uh, Jean- Jeannie Rob- Jeannie Rob- Robertson is so funny. Oh my yeah. gosh, and I could not believe uh, the story that she told. Yeah. A nice guy community. We'll put in the we'll put in the link. The, <laughs> yeah. And we'll put in the link the other comedian that we're going to chat with at some point. Right, right, right. <laughs> she was really good. So how did I, I? I remember we connected, but I cannot remember how. Oh, we connected through Twitter after coming home from exactly. NSA. Is that right, right? Exactly. Yeah, and it was at the uh, C Suite uh, Radio uh, session. Yeah, uh, that's yeah. where we first met. And, that's yeah. it. I got it. so see. I, now I got it all together. So you're not actually the guest I was hoping for. So I'm sorry, John. Right, right. <laughs> the interview, <laughs> interview is all over, man. Sorry. That's, a, that's the story of my life. Another well, letdown. There we well, go. What, like, What's what's so great, and and you exemplify this because I've watched a lot of the stuff that you've done online, and I've listened to your podcast, and and I'm, I've co- kind of been following you since we set up this interview, is that the National Speakers Association actually had a session on bringing funny to your to your speech, and right. while we think that people just have to naturally be funny, that's not actually the case. So when I connected with you on Twitter, and now I'm getting all of my facts straight. When I connected with you on Twitter, I'm like. Hey, I know, I know that you have that funny gene in you, but but help share share with the community what it is that you do, and then how funny is really affected business today. Yeah, absolutely. So you know, I, I well, I mean, I, the normal career route for a comedian or an accountant is neither of this. So uh, yeah, so <laughs> right. I graduated from the University of Notre Dame and then went to work for Pricewaterhouse Coopers, one of the big four firms, and uh, I was going to just take the world on accounting, consulting, doing a lot of merger acquisition stuff. And then uh, I just needed a creative outlet. So uh, there was a, a training in Pasadena. And so there were four or five of us that would rent a car every week. Uh, it was three weeks, four weeks. And so we would go down to the improv in Hollywood and uh, see a showcase of 12 comedians that and then the whose line is in any way group was in the middle uh after they got done taping they would come down so like drew carey and ryan wow. styles and colin wow. mockery and yeah brad sherwood they, they were so so funny and you know there were one night i remember adam sandler came in at the very end to try out some material that he was working on and i mean just you know it, but then there were also some people that were part of the showcase that were really not funny yeah. and in my head i was like well i could be as not funny as that person <laughs> of course because you're going to compare yourself to the worst guy that well, yeah, yeah. There, but I mean, but, I, but it's also like this is L.A., you know, right. and, and and not realizing that anyone can just move to L.A., um, you know, like it doesn't you don't need permission. Right. Right. Um, right. But but yeah. So then I, I waited about a month and uh, wrote down a bunch of ideas and went to the open mic at the Funny Bone in St. Louis in Westport Plaza and uh, went up and it actually went pretty well, uh, especially for a first time. It went really well. And then uh, and then I just got uh, I was bit by the bug. And then and so I just was doing it as a hobby just for fun and then eventually started to get paid. And then uh, eventually left Big Four because I was like, I can't do all the travel and the comedy. And then, uh, yeah, I started to take vacation days to get paid. And then in May of 2005 was my Bastille day of I'm out of here and uh, who's wow. with me? And I turned around and I was all by myself. <laughs> and like, you were by right. Exactly. Nobody, right. nobody's storming the castle but John. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And so since then, it's been a full time stand up. And then about three years ago, started to focus exclusively on corporate events, mostly accounting consulting firms um, and just bringing a little bit of levity and energy and engagement to events because they don't all have to be boring. Well, um, and, and let me stop you for just one second because I've, I've had the chance to host a number of like engineering and attorney and CPA kind of conferences where they just need somebody to come up and not necessarily be a funny guy, but just somebody that has a personality and be the host of the show. Exactly. And, and I always wonder why it is that an accounting firm, for example, well, why do they want somebody funny? Because 
it's not a funny business. They don't need, they don't want funny. Is it so that they keep people's attention or is it something That's different? exactly it. It's, it's exactly it. I mean, if you have experts coming up to share, like especially on like continuing education day where people have to get these credits every year to maintain their license, um, you know, you're going to have a lot of bricks coming at you. It's, it's not fun, digestible stuff because <laughs> right. it's presented by not by professional speakers. It's presented by other accountants. Right. And, and so not all of them are great at speaking or conveying ideas. And and so they, you have somebody like me that can come in in between to kind of just make sure people are awake and can be the right hand of the event organizer. And if somebody goes short, I can fill in the time. If somebody goes long, I can help speed things along. I can help just run the show. Um, so there's that or, you know, delivering a keynote as well, you know, with my own message. And, and I found what's really interesting about it, and this is probably the challenge that you face as well, is that most accountants and most engineers and most attorneys and those that are in the profession, and I don't mean to pick on anybody in those professions, but fuck it, let's pick on those people that right. in that profession most of the time they don't want to laugh. I mean, it's like you're sta- you you have a tough audience. It's not like they've come like liquored up and, no, ready, no. To la- and yeah. ready to laugh. They're ready to, oh shit, why John, it's the funny guy's coming in. Well, they I, don't I even know wanna... that I'm coming. They just think, oh, I'm here for some all staff meeting that I have to come to. And then all of a sudden I show up and they're like, oh wow, this is actually going to be good. I, I'm glad I was here. So the yeah. element of surprise is actually better better used in this particular case because you're you're the bomb that they get dropped yeah exactly and also uh you know when you're able to bring like legit funny then it just kicks this to a whole new level and then it becomes quite the opposite where they're like oh thank god that guy's coming back on stage now um so i'm their best friend i'm like a a morphine drip you know sort of (laughs) thing (laughs) yeah yeah i get it yeah well how how does a guy and and it sounds like you have a lot of natural funny in you just in the way that you express yourself and in your personality. And we had a phone call just about another business uh, prior to this uh, about a week or so ago, Nice Guy Community, just so you're aware that I know a little bit more about John other than the three seconds that we've actually been doing this this episode. Right. But what I found is that uh, it's very challenging to, how do you get into, how did you become a CPA? I mean, it, it did not look and seem like that that gene pool was going to be yours. Why CPA? Why did right. you become an accountant? Well, you know, and that's the thing that I that I talk to now is that the stereotypical accountant, stereotypical engineer, stereotypical lawyer, uh, that definition is is straight wrong. It really is, and especially when it comes to accountants and consultants. I mean, they're they're normal people that have hobbies and passions that they do outside of work. The problem is is that professionalism keeps them from sharing that, and yeah. they, they feel intimidated that if I do share, and that's that's my message, is that's what I tell everybody. Um, but yeah, but the way that the way I got into accounting is because I started engineering and then I got a D in physics and uh, my birthday is on April 15th and uh, I have limited <laughs> social skills. So uh, pretty much accounting oh, for me. Right. So oh, yeah. John, you can't tell me your birthday is April no, 15th. No, I swear. And, and, 1976. Oh, how all American can you get? That is hard. Tax Bicentennial day. tax day. <laughs> like I, I can remember I, I, in 1976, I was and I literally remember, and Strickland's probably going to edit this out because he never he never likes when I even share even what close is my close of my age and to to our nice guy community. But right. in 1976, I can remember talking to Greg Lazinski at the time, uh, and he was standing right next to me, and I said, I said, Greg, in the year 2000, we're going to be <laughs> years old, and he's like. Uh, We'll never get there. We'll right. never get there. And then we started talking about uh, George Orwell's 1984. That right. was eight years away. Right. I'm, like, I'm like, come on, guys. This, I can't make the, this kind of stuff up. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, what a, what just a, what a horrible, what a horrible thing to think that 2000 was already, it's almost 18 years ago. Oh man, at this it's insane. Point. And I remember that the whole Y2K, everything, everyone was losing their mind. I mean, on the countdown, I was waiting for like all the electricity to go out. It was like, <laughs> that's what I, I mean, because in, in, in the comedy world, and when you, when you have this uh, natural gift, it's a bit of a curse because I look at the world through a different lens. Yep. So um, I see things that stick out um, that I only see. And I, and it's one of those where I'm looking around, like, is anybody? Else, you know, it's like just me, you know, just right. me. And, and and George Carlin talked about it too because when he was very young, his comedy was very much like a Jerry Seinfeld, very clean, observational, whatever. And then he said, "I just got so angry, I couldn't keep it inside anymore." Um, and then you know, by the end, it got kind of weird and dark. But uh, but there in the middle, it was really really good. Um, 
And, and so, yeah, so, you know, so that's how I ended up in accounting. Uh, it was also because uh, that kind of prolonged my grow up decision uh, yeah. because, uh, well, what, what job can I get with the lowest GPA and still get a good job? So that'll be important. And then also, uh, if I could do accounting, I can still do finance. I can still do management. I can still do IT. I can still do marketing. So, OK, I don't have to actually grow up. Um, you're so like I'll, you're like every every Jewish mother's w- w- best dream because they're thinking, <laughs> oh my gosh, my son, he's going to aspire to only be an accountant. I mean that. Right. I mean, if, if my mom, she, I I've been a DJ for the last thirty years of my life, and in the last right. few years it being a uh, being a podcaster, and I went from the frying pan into the fire. My mom's like, are you fucking ever going to get a real job? I'm right. like, no. If I can figure out how to get through life through all of these years Ugh. without having a real job. You oh, are winning. You are just, so winning, Doug. Well, I, I feel like I'm winning, but my mom I know my mom would so much more have preferred me to be a all of her friends' kids, they're all doctors, they're all attorneys, they're sure. all engineers, architects, yeah. CPAs. I mean, yeah, you're on the bottom rung of the food chain being a professional as a CPA, but you know, John, that's not right, right. it's not a bad you're you're one step <laughs> above everything else, but one step below, like hey, what would happen? Why didn't you couldn't get be a doctor? Yeah, you know, exactly. Yeah, that? but but are those people on overcast and I too? No, I don't think so. So what's very up now? Very true. Like, what's very, up now? Like, <laughs> very, very true. Hey, one of the responses you gave, and I, and I love this, and you, and you just made a brief mention of it just a moment ago. One of the responses you gave on the Q&A that I send out is to never let professionalism suffocate your personality. Yeah. How can we make this con- this this like real world for those that want to express themselves, but fear the results of being a, a funny guy? Let's say in a serious business. I mean, take financial planning for example. For instance, sure. how do, how can you be a funny guy or share your personality without it? without it losing you business. Yeah. Well, I mean, actually it'll enhance your business. Um, It's scary to think of because no one's teaching you that uh, all through school. It's all technical skills. All your continuing education is all technical skills. But when you're running a business, um, what makes them pick you as a financial planner or an accountant doing taxes or whatever service you provide over somebody else? I mean, uh, especially when it comes to taxes and financial plan. I mean, like you can do that on your own. Uh, right, so, right, so what is right. it, what is what does it makes them pick you over somebody else? And it's your personality. It's who you are. It's your hobbies, your passions. So it's, it's maybe just, uh, sharing some of that or asking the other person. And, and really what it boils down to is just showing a genuine interest in the other person and, and what they, you know, not only what their hobby passions are, but why. Um, and then, and then all of a sudden, if, if you have the same hobby or passion, like if you both love cycling, then you're best friends right now on accident. Um, you know, and, and, and so then, uh, that, cl- that client will want to choose you because, Hey, we have something in common. And I actually like talking to that person because they're a real human and they're approachable. And it, it, the, the problem is, is that people are scared because they're like, Oh, it makes me a little bit vulnerable, but, uh, but that's, that's what makes you, uh, approachable. And, and that's what makes people want to be around you. Um, I agree with the re- the relationship thing is is totally the direction that I would go in. Also, I always thought that I had to have a personality because smarts was not going to take me there because right. I just didn't have any. I mean, I was a I was a, a well under one thousand on my on my uh, what, what the hell you call those things again? Uh, the, the SATs. Uh, S- right, 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 thank you. I don't even know the acronym board anymore. I, I think I was, everyone I, believes that you did get well under one thousand. The fact that you didn't know that it was good. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I do remember going in there with. With my friend Richard Shapiro, and actually the test, I think that they, they broke it down into I forget how many sections. It might have been two sections at the right. time. It might yeah, be yeah. more now. Yeah. But they they give you like three hours a section. I can remember literally going <laughs> in there and having twenty and being finished in twenty minutes right. on each of the each of the two sections. <laughs> right. And my friend Richard's looking at me with my pencil down, and and there was not cell phones at the time, so I'm probably just got my feet up on the desk and say, "You're such a fucking loser, Sandler. Are you ever right. going to accomplish anything in your right. life?" And I kept thinking, I, you know, I there have there the things called podcasts that are out right. there. I know they're going to be invented. Somebody will. This was in like 1912. Right, right, right. And I'm right. like, I'm going to I'm going to be a podcast host. And I know I'm going to be good at it too. It's exactly. going to take me a long time. <laughs> right, right. But but yeah. uh, that whole process was uh, was like was crazy for I don't like I said before I don't even remember what the fuck I was thinking where, what direction right. I was going in with this yeah, other yeah. than knowing that I was not going to accomplish much in my life when it came to smart so personality had to kind of push me through right and and, and that, yeah and and that's the thing is like once we all have a basic level of skills so like in the accounting world a lot of people have the CPA uh, you've passed the CPA exam well now that we've all passed that. 
uh, getting another certification or another degree or whatever. You know, those people with the business cards that have 17 right. letters after their name. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it doesn't impress me. Uh, if you if you just have CPA and then you're a real person with a personality, you're going to bring in so much business to your firm. It doesn't matter how many more letters after your name. Um, and it, it's a career accelerant. Uh, you know, for, for everybody. And, and I tell this story because I was floored by this. So when I started PwC, I was in the St. Louis office and uh, a friend of mine and I started a monthly newsletter that we would only send to our start class, but it was very much like The Onion. So they were satirical newsletter articles uh, making fun of the firm, making fun of our start class. Um, you know, like one of them was because because uh, the PwC slogan at the time was together we can change the world. And so it was... Uh, actually the world hasn't changed very much. And so there was like a whole article about how like, you know, there's still famine and war and like all this and, you know, like we're not really doing a very good job of it. And and, and so we would send it to our start class. Well, what happened is, is people would print it and then it would get mixed in with other people's stuff. And then all of a sudden it spread like wildfire. And so in a good way, uh, now everyone knows who I am and I started to do stand up, and people knew that about me. Well, fast forward 12 years. 12 years later, I'm brought in as a speaker to this PwC event and a partner yeah. who I had never worked with. I had no idea who he was. His name's Mark Baumgartner. I didn't know that at the time. He saw the list of speakers and told a bunch of people, I know who John Garrett is. That's the guy who did comedy at night. And I was floored by that because I had no clue who he was. But 12 years later, I'm on the short list of the people that you recollect. And you don't remember me for anything work related, and I had a pretty good resume. So, so, uh, so generally, yeah. they take the guys that are that are that are funny, and they take them out of what they're doing when you're a professional, and they put you in either the business development or the marketing department, right? An organization, right? Yeah, <laughs> and and I uh, I somehow d- jumped through all the hoops and uh, just out the door. But uh, but then I, I started doing some studying up on it. And it's really fascinating because it, there's like brain science behind this yeah. uh, for why people should just show a little bit of their personality show a picture on their desk or on their desktop laptop or whatever and it's uh it's you know there's norepinephrine which is like when you meet someone that's interesting or or i think i read a book that she wrote nora efron is that what you said (laughs) 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 right 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 i heard that yeah yeah because i mean it's just basically that interesting people are you're interested in them and uh so norepinephrine norepinephrine kicks in in your brain and then right after that is oxytocin which is what creates bonding and trust and uh, engagement and all that all that good stuff and uh, it's it's uh it's amazing how that works and and but no one teaches you that and no one encourages that and there's very few role models out there above you to show that and so uh so sometimes you got to just create it amongst yourselves in a little circle I love the fact that you brought a lot of this to your to your podcast too. I've had a chance to listen to some of your some of your episodes. Talk about the format of your show and and how you kind of figured it out because uh, you have these longer format shows followed by these shorter format shows. So so talk about it a little bit and what what's the show called? Yeah, thanks so much. It's uh, the Green Apple Podcast, and it's basically you know don't be the stereotype. Um, you know when I say think of an apple, everyone thinks of a red apple. Um, so you know I'm not asking you to be a kiwi or a grapefruit. You know, just be a green apple, you know, nothing weird. Um, but uh, yeah, and so the, the the show is great. Every week on Wednesdays, I interview a professional who's known for a hobby or a passion. And we brag that up a little bit. Everything from doing stained glass to owning a custom menswear design studio to, uh, you know, these are all people that are full-time accountants, consultants, lawyers, engineers, a guy that played minor league baseball for two years. Um, you know, and, and so we, we talk about that. But then the next level is how's that impacted your career? Uh, relationships with coworkers, relationships with clients, a skill set that you have that other people really don't. If you're in theater, let's say um, stuff like that, and then uh, so it's it's been really really fun and really cool just to see the human side of professionalism. Uh, you know, there's there's a whole side of us that that never gets a light shine on on it. So it's it's really neat. And then on Mondays I do with uh, Rachel Fish. Uh, she's with uh, Sage Canada, and uh, so it's really fun to we find articles about corporate culture and employee engagement and things like that. And we just kind of talk through those for about five to seven minutes and uh, have, have some good laughs. So. You, you totally screwed it up for me because the uh, the Kiwi Growers Association is actually a part of my audience. But, you know, we lost them now that you said that you don't fucking be a Kiwi grower. I mean, what the? <laughs> no, no, don't be a Kiwi. Like oh, I'm oh, saying, even, wor- even worse, John, we don't have control of, a who, of who we are. <laughs> right. Well, I guess uh, I should have looked at it. it. You still got the grapefruit people on your back. So, uh, yeah, the, yeah, gro- great. Yeah. Well, the grapefruit people, they, I have been courting them for a little while. Well, but the, Kiwi, the Kiwi folks are gone now. So. You're welcome. You're welcome, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you know? 
know, New Zealand has been one of those areas that I've worked very hard to uh, to kind of uh, you know formulate, and you've just blown the entire. I don't blame you, me. man. I, I would work very hard to get to New Zealand myself. I want to I want to head over to your Twitter account for a second. I want uh, I'm I'm quoting you directly from your from your uh, f- uh, from your feed. If you could take your life back five years from today. What advice would you give your, uh, you provide your 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 younger self? So yeah. I want to do the same thing with you. I mean, I I know that's that's one of those more of those canned questions that a podcaster would ask, but I like to see some of the results that you got on your uh, because as a funny person, when you ask those questions, you get smart ass answers. Yeah, I do <laughs> a lot yeah, of times. So yeah, well, so just today, I think it was uh, somebody said I would go back and bet on the Cubs. And I'm a huge St. Louis Cardinals fan. And I replied, even if they, I knew they were going to win, I still wouldn't bet on the Cubs. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Gives you, it gives you fodder for material later yeah, yeah. on. That, that's good. Because, I mean, good. we all know the Cubs. They would screw it up anyway. Even if they were supposed to win, we know they were supposed to win. I would put the money down and then they would screw it up. So, you know, that's how it goes. But, but no, I mean, if I were to go back five years, I would tell myself to just uh, follow, follow that story more. Follow my own advice. Be more bold. Um, you know, because, uh, falling in line and being the stereotype is in, and just waiting in line is not going to get you anywhere. Yeah. Um, don't take shortcuts and cheat the system, but do it your own way. And, uh, and just don't be afraid to be yourself because what'll happen is, you know, it's, it's that, that phrase, if you don't turn anybody off, you're never going to turn anybody on. Yeah. And if you're yeah. right down the middle and you're vanilla and you're boring, then nobody cares. I mean, there's a million of those people. Um, so just be you and be yourself and, uh, you know, be appropriate, clearly. Uh, I'm right. not talking about bringing drama to the office or, you know, things along those lines. Uh, it, but, but you know, who you are and what you're really passionate about um, is, is so important because that's, that's who you really, really are and what brings you pure joy. And if you're able to bring some of that to the office, now work becomes fun. And your clients are doing things that you also love doing. Work becomes fun. You know, and uh, so as, so as a guy that as a guy that's really done a lot of stuff that many people would say, holy shit, that would scare the crap out of me to do that. I could not speak in front of an audience. I couldn't. Uh, I I can't be funny. So I, I I comedy. There's no way. Right. So as somebody that has that as your that's on your okay list because obviously you're okay as a professional speaker and a comedian. What's something that scares the shit out of you? Snakes. <laughs> well yeah but that's i i understand that that's real world but when you you live in fucking brooklyn man when's that's the last true. snake that you ran that's, into I, I haven't maybe that's why i'm so scared of them because i don't see them and then what i do so. i'm like whoa uh yeah i you know um uh well, okay let me let me make it easier for you what what is this something that scares the shit out of you when it comes to comedy is it lack of laughs is it a heckler is it flop sweat is there something like that that scares you or that doesn't even bother you yeah well i mean i've done over 1900 shows so you know i mean i've opened for the band train in front of over 3,000 people uh louis anderson over a thousand people many times um so you know doing those shows uh actually the bigger the audience the better i guess what scares me when it comes to comedy especially here in new york city is when you're doing a show and there's only 15 people in the audience and they're all from Sweden. And uh, and I don't... How often does that happen? Uh, it's happened and I don't have any fjord jokes. So I don't really know <laughs> what to talk about. I just bring up Ikea and meatballs and, um, you know, that's about it. And <laughs> that's that's brutal because they don't and now, know... What... And now, John, you can't even go to fucking Ki- uh, uh, New Zealand now because you've eliminated the Kiwi people. Right, right. <laughs> no, I, they're, they're all, you know, so it's, uh, you know, it's, it's something like that where it's, it's an audience that uh, I can't relate to. Um, um, but you know, for the most part, uh, I've done so many that I can get through it just fine. And, and the shows are good. So, 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 it, so the re- aside from snakes, is there really nothing that, that you're fearful of? Um, well, I guess when I was, when I was younger is definitely talking to girls. I mean, that's for sure. They got cooties and all kinds of stuff, but, uh, <laughs> I think they still have cooties. You just, you, you're yeah, like you the just, cooties now. You just, lit over, you just get over it. Um, right. Yeah. I mean, uh, maybe a little bit of heights, a little bit of scared of heights. Um, it's so funny where you're, so you're right. You definitely have a different way of thinking because you were physically thinking about things that scare you. And I, and I guess what I'm trying to get from you and it's okay that you're not going there because maybe the reality is maybe there's nothing. Are, are you afraid of failure? Are you afraid of, oh, I mean, for, yeah. like, 
like you okay. know from a business perspective is there if you put your your business yes. hat on yes. dude <laughs> my get bad. out of your, get out of your eight-year-old self for a second my bad. i know as a comedian aren't you continually constantly going to your I, six-year-old self i thought this self? was a slumber party doug i didn't know what was going on like <laughs> i'm wearing my pajamas aren't you <laughs> totally absolutely like, uh, yeah okay so as a business owner what am i scared of um I'm scared of uh, not answering questions properly on a podcast. That's what I'm really, really scared of. <laughs> oh, you totally fucked that up many times. <laughs> You're doing great, man. You're doing right. great. No, no. Uh, I would say as a business owner, what I'm scared of, it's just as an accountant, that super risk averse nature. So yeah. I want to make sure that something is really, really, really good before I start shouting it from the rooftops. And I am so Midwest about everything where I'll go and speak to a group. They'll love me. They'll literally say, I have no idea what we're going to do next year um, type of uh, compliments. And I'll just think, oh, well, they'll just tell their friends that work for other companies and other firms because that's what they would do. And, yeah. and it, that's not their job. They're not my agent or my manager. Um, and so, you know, for, and, I'm, and then I think, oh, maybe I'll call and follow up. No, I don't want to interrupt their day with a phone call. And I do you know, the and, same thing. You know, man. And it's, the it's, same it's the thing. nice guys. Going. It's the nice yeah. guys thing. And, and it's like no pressure. I don't want to pressure them. Right. If they like me, they'll right. call me. They'll tell their friends. Right. It's right. like, fuck, that does not. That do, It's not real world. It though. doesn't happen. It doesn't no. happen. And, uh, and so, yeah. And so I'm also scared of just throwing something out there that's going to not be high quality. And so like when it came to my podcast, um, you know, just churning out the episodes, but now that I'm getting like really good feedback, it's no, no, I'm telling everybody about this green apple podcast now because right, you know, right. it, it's really good and people really like it. So, uh, so yeah, so that, no, that's, that's the biggest that's fear. Totally, totally get it. Totally get it. And I, and I love the fact that there is some, there, there is that same, I, I, I never realized until you just said it, I never realized that I'm just that way too. I'm like, I just did a speech yesterday. I, I was working for, I, I'm going to drop a name here. I was working for Marriott and that's a big company to do some work with. So totally I'm getting, I, I get done with it and she's like, that was really great. We need a follow up to this. And yeah. I'm thinking as I'm getting home, I'm like, I, I, they liked it. And I thought, I think I did a really good job. And, and she even said she'll share it with some of her brand ambassadors at some of the other organizations that they, that they work a lot with. And then I keep thinking, uh, but she'll do it on her time. I, you know, I don't want to bother. Her. Yeah, <laughs> That's exactly right. what I said. No, exactly. But she gave me the she yeah. gave me the the golden ticket. She's like, we need a follow up program, and like I'm thinking. Oh, uh, more, she doesn't really work. mean that. She's that's just being more, nice. That's, like, that's more work for right. me, and that's probably just means more money. <laughs> right? <laughs> I don't nah, want to I, don't, do that. I don't want either one of those. Like <laughs> all of a sudden, I'm going to have an office job, and then my mom's going to be excited, and oh, like none yeah, of that. Yeah, 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 none of that. That means more work, more motivation. Yeah, but, yeah, I figure everything is business development. Do I actually have to actually deliver? Now? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, actually, that's really funny because I get 50 percent deposits on all my speaking engagements, and so the, for the month of January, I actually had no travel. I was home the whole month, but I had booked a lot of things. And I, I joked with my wife that I said, I, I think I'm just going to start selling deposits because like, <laughs> this is great. Like I'm just getting checks and I'm not even doing anything. This is awesome. Like, feel this, feel the same, man. Right. I feel the same. And it, isn't it amazing that we actually get paid uh, to, I mean, I love doing what I do absolutely. and I would do it. I, I would not do it free because that would be stupid right. to say that, but I would do it free just so you yeah, know. Yeah. But I, uh, but I cannot believe when we actually get a check to do what we well, do. Well, it's, it's it's just um, it, the, the part of it is, though, that it's so hard. And I don't think that people always understand that part, that by the time we get on stage, that's the easy part. Being yeah. in front of people are like, oh, you must be so scared to speak in front. Of Do you have any idea what I crawled through to get to this stage? <laughs> like, this is gravy. Like, this is nothing. You know, the phone know. calls and the emails and the follow up and the, the links and the connections and all this. And just to get this one thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, you you paid me for the 16 emails it took to close this fucking deal. Right. That's and I had to get on an for. airplane. I was delayed. I had to sit next to somebody that probably should have bought two seats. You know, like, I mean, just like, I, you know, it was hot, like whatever, you know, all that stuff yeah. that by the time I get on stage, like that's my happy place. Like, you know, just yeah, drop man. me there. I hear you, John. You have been such a, a great... <laughs> I, I'm looking at the time and I'm like, holy shit, I, we just absorbed that complete episode right there. Oh my Nicely gosh. done. Well, Nicely thank done. Thank you, man. 
so John, if our if our listening audience, our nice guy community, and the and the severe nice guy community who are our Funkin' fans, if they wanted to get a hold of you to get more info on bringing one of your funny programs to their uh, to their organization, how can they do that, and how can they find out about you? Yeah, sure. I mean, the website is therecoveringcpa.com, and uh, yeah, or the the, the greenapplepodcast.com. You can uh, check that out there as well. So uh, both go to the same place. Awesome, man. Awesome, man. I appreciate you being on the show. Thank you so very much. We'll make sure we put all the info for our Nice Guy community in the uh, in the show notes. John, thanks for being a part of the show today. No, it's my pleasure, Doug. Thank you, man. Hey, Nice Guy community, never underestimate the power of nice. Again, special thanks to John Garrett. We'll put all of his information, including how to get to his podcast, how to... Uh, he's got a really fun uh, speaker reel on his website as well that I was taking a look at before we uh, connected today. So uh, check out all the fun stuff that he's got on his website. All that info will be on the show notes. Steve O'Brien, go ahead and take us out of here for the nice guys on business i'm steve o'brien fill up your week with the nice guys well there's always money in the banana stand all right thanks for getting through all the technical stuff uh, i'm afraid no our time is up though right right <laughs> have a good week everybody <laughs> <laughs> recoveringcpa.com check it out all right there we go <laughs> that's good well you got the plug in so that's right, the right, important right. side no, no no it's all good <laughs>